better than you could have ever made it yourself. But the actors bring a lot to the equation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But documentary form is exciting too. I've seen a lot yeah. of documentaries on HBO. I tried to keep up with you know with documentaries and mm -hmm. all that. It's quite amazing what they do now. But now that you talk about castles, uh, when I went to Denmark last time, I went to the uh, one of the castles there. I took the train and it was so beautiful. Um, and I would like to see if I can bring a cameraman there or just get a cameraman over there now that I'm thinking out loud mm -hmm. and just set up an interview with uh, with actors over mm. there. But now yes. that you're telling me that the lighting is going to be a challenge now. Well, it depends I'm where <laughs> where in the castle or what kind of castle it is. I'm actually going to be there in January. I'm shooting a science fiction film in Germany. Are so, you? Yeah. So, so you're going to go to Denmark too? No, no, but I mean, it's, it's right around the corner. There. It's just so beautiful. You, yeah. Have you been in Denmark before? Yeah. So you like it? Yeah. You great. do? Mm -hmm. There's a, the castle, the, fa the famous castle. The mm. Hamlet Castle, Elsinore. And it's just so beautiful and it's so majestic. And the ocean is in, it is just so beautiful. But in terms of like the lighting, tell me, because I'm, I'm very much interested in lighting myself mm -hmm. like when i'm doing the show when i come here and i do my interviews and even when i go out the field and i'm setting interviews out there i i what what do we have to know in terms of like the basics for lighting what do we mm -hmm. need to know when we shoot well there's a James? saying that i think is interesting it goes the difference between art and pornography is in the lighting that's in, that's a good it's a good yeah but really the uh, in terms of lighting I think it's important not to use too many lights. Uh -huh. And um, sometimes it's good to know to use no light, just one light, two lights, three lights. Sometimes you need to use a lot of lights. But uh, if you look at nature and you see how beautiful and varied light is in nature, then it's amazing. And then what, what you try to do is mimic what happens in nature, and then you can make that scene look like that. Mm -hmm. But it takes time to set up the lighting the way you like it, right? If you, for a standard interview, how long does it take you, more or less? Usually I'd say, yeah, 40 minutes. Well, that's setting up the light and the camera, so like 40 minutes to an hour. Uh-huh. How was my footage, that I, the one that I did with the Chopra? Because it was it, good. It was yeah. good, even though you were like, say, see, see, you were coming back and forth between cameras. We were so, I was so like, a, like an amateur. But I gotta be to a certain degree. I'm a big fan of Chopra. When I see him coming in, I was a little bit kind of like, he has so much deepness about him, but he's so calm. Mm. Yeah, he's very calm. Nothing, nothing ruffled him. Even when he started to become ruffled and really wanted to go, he was, he was still Yeah, calm. I know. He was with the phone and said, okay, are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? And I'm like <gasps> snapping pictures like a little girl, you know, but he was very much, what was your opinion, James, of that moment? No, uh, you Tell know, he's me. so eloquent and yes. he's been, he can he's talk about so many different subjects. Forever. He's incredible and he's a, he's a great storyteller. I mean, he's a master storyteller. So yeah, I, I can, I can only say good things about him. How can he write so fast? Like Stephen King, they seem to read, like, read and write and read and write really fast. Well, he's just How preparing work, things man? all the time. He's just Can you work in so many different directions? And then really? at some point, then it just <laughs> falls into place. Yeah, I mean, uh, not a lot of people can do it, but he can. He can do it. Yeah. Okay, so you self-search, you're a man, you meditate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Every single day? Yes. For how long? 20 minutes or 40 minutes, depending. And you prefer to meditate in the morning hours or late afternoon hours? Or morning and then and again in the night. Okay. Now, when, when do you have ideas, like the ideas that you have for this show, how does it work for you? Do you like to keep a journal? Do you, how does it work? The creative no, process? No, I just, I just remember it. You know, I, I remember it. Like, um, you know, for some reason, I always have a, a Bhutto dance idea and a, a we're th thinking about doing a theater show about, um, it's a Budo theater production, but it would have to do with when the American Indians were dying. Oh, that, and, that and, would be something. And it was like for. when they had all been defeated and they realized that there was no hope or, and that they were going to, and they were starving and no one was feeding them. They didn't have food, they couldn't have guns, they didn't have buffaloes, they didn't have anything. And so they, sparred, sp they prayed to their ancestors that their ancestors saved them. And they started doing this dance. 
And then it, it wasn't just one tribe that went everywhere through all the tribes. And it didn't work. And it was like they died off, most of them. A few, you know, a few lived, but um, it's a very tragic story. But I think it's very beautiful, evocative, haunting. So uh, we were talking about working on that. How do you make images poetic? It's poetry. Somebody used, I don't know, it was a famous writer who said that poetry is everywhere. I don't know if I quite agree with that statement. Sometimes I get burnt out when I get in the subway. I said, oh man, sometimes a little too crazy. But you capture images and you have ideas. How do you bring poetry to them? Well, I think there's a couple ways. One is, um, I think it's like, it's a feeling you have. There's mm -hmm. a feeling for aesthetic. And when something is beautiful, you have enjoyment in, in making it look beautiful. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not, and so that's, but there's also uh, an energetic component where you feel it in your body. And then it's, that's also nice to, to engage in that feeling of creating something beautiful. And uh, it's like a dance. And so you just let yourself go into that dance. All right, how do you inspire yourself? What kind of things turn you on intellectually, mentally? I really like ancient history. You know, reading about the Egyptians, reading about the Greeks and the Romans, all that kind of stuff. I, I really There's a great book about the Greeks and the Romans. My father gave to me, who was a voracious reader, but there's a famous book written by Indro Montanelli. Mm -hmm. History of the Greeks, Historia los Griegos, Historia los Romanos. It, mm. it is amazing to read because he mm. got like, I can't believe it. Look, it's already half hour. Oh, okay. They're already rolling up the credits. That's a great book. That's good about the history of the Rome and the Greeks. But ancient history, you like ancient history? Yes, I love ancient history. Very much. Do you yeah. like to watch films? Do you go to the movies much? Do I don't know? anymore. I used to. Why I, not? I don't have time. Oh, man, you're a busy man. What do you mean? You don't have time for movies? You don't have time for Mr. Cruz? Mission Impossible? Don't have time. I'm so shallow. I can't. I, I thought I was a smart woman, but now I can't sit down no, with I, so, you. I don't, I don't know how people have time to watch TV. It's like, I, are I you don't. kidding me without TV? I'm dead. No. I can be dying, running every single day, yeah. getting my life together, working, paying my bills, taking care of my sister, my husband, my every. I mean, I can live my life literally, but if I don't have TV, uh -huh. I'm dead. So how do you do it? How well, does it work? Well, I guess you're, a, you're a, a captive audience then, right? Well, I mean, I got a flip channel, so you never watch TV? No. Not even the news? No. You don't bother, you don't waste your time? Well, I read the news, I don't watch it. No. Uh-huh. No, yeah. no NBC, CBS, no. HBO, Showtime. Now, when they have documentaries that you're interested in, you just go to Netflix? Yeah, or wherever. I mean, if someone says, oh, watch that, then I'll make a point of watching it. You know, I love watching I love watching uh, documentaries. Yeah. Because I think that they've kind of changed and become more important, and it's a, a, the best way for people to become informed. And it's to, w to learn kind of in a deeper sense what's going on. Because I think uh, journalism has taken a big hit, and yeah. um, people aren't allowed to investigate as deeply. They're not allowed but to they write. They don't read. They're not allowed to write Jeez, long pieces I, I, anymore. I'm watching, number one, I, and I'm not going to. It's easy to criticize. People sometimes it's so easy to sit down and just criticize. And when you have to finally do it, it's a different story. But I was watching, flipping some channels. And uh, in the morning hours, James, like, like, the, like the, the hosts and the journalists, they were so, like, so unnatural and unorganic. Yeah. I just couldn't believe it. This is a big network. This is, where's the fire? Where, where is the truth? Where's the honesty? Because you want to be able honesty? to connect to them as people, and, you, but, and it's hard to, because you don't, you, they feel you, too stiff. But they're getting high yeah. ratings. Go figure. Uh, well, yeah. uh, how does it work? Because I, I see it, and I, I, the more I see TV, the more I watch TV, I said, everybody's so damn not natural, not organic, be, not truthful. You know, because they're called programs for a reason. They're called programs because it programs people's minds. It conditions people. And so when you've been conditioned all your life, then it's like you said, you want to watch television. You relate to that because you've been trained to, to relate to it. But I had to flip channels. I'm jumping. I, I love to watch documentaries mm. um, in the History Channel, but obviously movies. And when I see the movie in, in Interstellar, um, 
obviously Time Magazine, they always have perfect timing. Um, they, come, they came up with a nice uh, cover with Matthew McConaughey and the director in Anne Hathaway. And he's a very, you know, this guy is, I think he's a genius. Yeah, I mean, he's To great. be able to explore in such a way. Mm. Because art, after all, is, what's the mission? Is to, what, what's the mission with arts? Um, well, I think there's James. a couple things, but one... I, I, in, Besides in, communicating. Well, in my view, it's, it's one, they, it should be visionary in some sense. Uh -huh. And it kind of opens up a perspective into more breadth and depth of what the world really is. Mm -hmm. Can we handle it? Yes, we can. Yes, of course we can. And I think it's, it's, it's also about kind of a, a purity of, of human expression that's so beautiful. Uh, let's participate in that. Let's play in that dance. Let's sing. Let's dance. Let's recite poetry. It's, it's fun. You know, it's like lay your shadow on the sundial and in the hallways let the winds flow free. free. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just, it's fun to, 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 to say poetry. It's like four fathom five thy father lives. These are pearls that were his eyes, but he doth not fade, suffereth only a, ch a sea change into something rare and strange. I mean, that's a whole universe right there, right? Right. It's amazing. You it's, can create a whole, even, yeah. even one, what, just one word, even one sentence. Yeah. Even, but I, I think it's to inspire us all and to bring us to the Lord. Of, I don't know. It's got to be, I think God is the biggest master, is it? Is it? Is it? Well, I wouldn't he say he, he, he. Is it no, he or it's, she? Is it you? Is it, is, it, is it energy? It is. Right? That bring us together. Yeah, well, we are together. It's all. Are we together? Because if, yes, we're, if we are. we're together while we're fighting all the time, because and that's ignorance. We don't realize it, but we are together. Oh, James, you're too optimistic for my own no. sake. I think that. No, we, we can, all, we can die and blow everything up and, and go to space dust. It doesn't matter. We will come back and we'll come to, the, to this. <laughs> moment when? again and we'll have the opportunity again to say okay i love you and i realize it and we're all connected james that will be beautiful and it's 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 nice to hear it and i know you're a smart 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 man but when i see about what's happening out there and when i see the pictures that you send me of your show and thinking about what you know what what war does to humanity and the devastation and, and the loss and people dying, people killing one another. It's just the times are not, I don't think they're getting any better. I don't know if, if the world has to come to an end for us to realize what we have. Are we able to think really about what's going to happen in the future? Because it well, seems but like it, we're it, crashing. No, but, it's, but, but there's a lot of very good things happening too. And it's where do you want to align your attention? Where do you align good. your perspective? And what do you want to grow? That's what you want to grow. That's what you want to make better. So you have to focus on it to make it happen. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be aware of what's going on. I'm very much a proponent of that. But you but have to focus on something that is good, good healthy, and that is, you know, it, it, it supports other people too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm and it's, sorry. it's like you, you, I'm a little you, too rough around the no, edges. No, but you, we, we can't control what's going to happen. We can only thing we control is our little life and how we influence people. And th so w that's all. That's what we should work with. That's right. That's right. Are you taking pictures? Are you filming your own work? Are you documenting your own work now in Brooklyn? What's happening? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been. Um, it, it's great to have like a lecture series, organize a lecture series and, and, right, right. and get people you like and yes. have them come and present. And, and it's also great that there's a lot of young people showing up and saying, oh, yeah, what's this? And, you know, they have open, active minds. And yeah, it's fun. It's you know, fun it's because there is so many other things going on. You just have to tap into it and yes. say, OK, what are they saying? What are they thinking about? What do they believe? And, um, you know, the, the media monolith, huh. you can just, you know, we already know what they're telling us. What's the biggest challenge in the times we're living? What's the biggest challenge? James? I think that the biggest challenge Not is... Not to lose ourselves? Perhaps? Well, to stay grounded, maybe, because yeah, I think... I um, agree. I think there's so many different opportunities, possibilities for distraction, 
but also it's very hard to financially to make ends meet and then on top of that kind of do realize your dreams. But I, I think that's what we have to do is we have to realize our dreams no matter what and keep on working at that. And now that you use the word dreams, it's, that's a word to explore, right? I yeah. mean, I was, I'm reading about uh, uh, Carl Jung mm -hmm. and um, all his thoughts about dreaming and, you know, and the inner conscience and how do we explore what's happening. Well, he's, the there he inside. says that we are all connected by the, the, the universal unconscious. Right. You know, and the anima is the force that unites right. us and drives us all. The br it's the pranic living force b between us. And um, I think he's right. I mean, I think of all of these students that Freud has, I think he had kind of the, the widest view and the wisest yeah. view. Smart and, um, man. Smart, smart, smart. And an audience man. He, he wrote a book. He had a mental breakdown. And he created a book about it. And it took him, I think, 40 or 50 years to make. He painted it, and it's a work of genius. And he says, no one's allowed to print it. No one's allowed to look at it. And just maybe five years ago, they actually printed it. And you see kind of what a real artist he was. Yes, and so deep and so profound. Have you seen the movie with Michael Fassbender? Yes, it was wonderful. I liked it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely exquisite. But that's meant to explore But the nature of dreams, what, you know, the meaning behind dreams, when we wake up and when we remember, when we had a nightmare the night before, when we, when we live the dream that it feels so present, it seems like we're flying, but we're not flying. I always dream that I'm flying. Well, maybe you are flying. You know. I don't know what, I don't know the meaning because well, every word has a meaning, every color has a meaning when you're dreaming. Uh, but I'm always flying and I'm always getting, uh, like. Well, fl that's a very good. Is it good, you that's think? A, yes, it's very positive if you're flying. It means expressing freedom, power, you know. You're, you're putting that into the collective unconscious every night when you're flying, you know, it's inspiring 